welcome to the first episode on the Bush Performance YouTube channel. As you can see, the shop is a complete disaster. And so uh, we're just going to start with cleaning that up because after a full season of racing, shit just gets piled up. You know how it is. All right, let's go. Okay, so here's a problem that I run into all the time. What? Where, what do I do with this used oil? Like, what, where am I supposed to put that? Let me know, where do you take your used motor oil? Would anybody be interested in uh, buying a piece of sheet metal? Uh, I don't never know, how big time do you have to be before you can sell it? What, what is this stuff even worth? Let me know, it'll help me put new sheet metal on the new car. All right, we got the dome on, the modified feature's about to start. The shop uh, looks a little bit better, but uh, also a little bit worse. Uh, we're getting there. We're going to have a clean shop before the night's over. Okay, so we got the shop looking pretty decent. Decent enough that I'm tired of cleaning for a while. And so I'm going to uh, open up my box with my uh, new AFCO Chevelle stub in it. Well, we got an AFCO replacement frame kit fits. 68 to 72 Chevelle. It was bubble wrapped. All right, let me take it out of the bubble wrap and I'll show you some more. Do you guys like it when I film me doing things? Do you like it when I just show you when I'm done doing the thing? I don't know. Let me show you guys what we got here. The right and left frame rail, the front part of the frame rails, the cross member, the A-arm mounts, and those little spacers. And that is what comes in the box with your AFCO frame kit. Oh, also, thanks Rex Merritt. Helped me out getting the frame shipped to me. Appreciate it. So you guys could probably see this in the background. I didn't mention it. This is the part I'm really excited about. I uh, sported a little bit on the uh, DMI Bulldog with the easy tubes. So when uh, I run over the wall as I do... It's, uh, it doesn't, it's not like a whole week ordeal to pull the whole rain out of the car and replace the tube that week. Really just ruins your whole week. This uh, housing center section is self-contained, so like if you take the tube off, you don't lose any fluid out of it. On a regular quick change, you have to take this whole thing off, and then the rear end's basically all the way apart, and you lose all the fluid, and you gotta take it all the way out of the car, and it's really a pain. And this just kind of simplifies it, and it costs a little bit extra, but I think that I will be thanking myself for it when, like I said, I do run over the wall with it. pretty sweet one thing though because of the way that I am this uh, shiny gold it does look cool but that's gonna have to get painted black before we put that on the car can't can't be having shiny gold things under the car that's that's not cool also I got to mention DMI not a sponsor I just thought they made a really good product so DMI if you're watching this we could do some promotional work I, I do think you have a nice product not a sponsor though not getting paid by DMI at all Calling it a night there. Shop's pretty clean. I think uh, me and Annie might work a little bit tomorrow on this clip. I'm not sure, but uh, I'll let you guys know. I'll film it, see if I can uh, get a little more action for you guys. See you later. All right, it's the next day. We're gonna take the stub over to Andy Milliken's house. Uh, we're gonna get a jig set up. He has a Chevelle clip we can jig off of, and we're going to. Jig off of that to where we have some locations known, and we're gonna work on getting this Chevelle frame mocked up together where we can get it jigged up in correct geometry. All right, we are headed to Milliken's house, and uh, we got some parts in the back. I think uh, Dodie may be over there right now, Dodie Lou. Uh, we'll see if he is. He wanted to be in one of these videos, so we'll get him in if he's over there. Alright, let's see what we got going on around here. 
Hey, Daddy. Hey, Race. Look, Shanda. The original. Is that mine? Hell no, it's mine. Wait, you don't have an extra? I don't want off of this year's. I do. Hey. It's back there, crinkled up. We're going to jig off of this one to get our major pickup points. And then we'll be able to make two nice race car frames. Do you, do you have anything to say about the state of your shop right now? Please don't put this in your video. <laughs> Got it! Yeah. I'm doing honeydews on the boat before we can start racing. You remember when street stocks looked like this? I hate to just throw this thing away. Like it's like a that's like a four hundred dollar pull or J bar. I don't know. You think you could straighten that? Who wants to fix it right now? <laughs> okay. What are you gonna do? Here we go. <laughs> I think we're gonna need the diesel. I think we're gonna need a heavier truck. <laughs> did it fix this at all? No. <laughs> how, how the hell did I bend that like that if that won't do anything to it? No. I, I would have thought that was the stoutest J bar they make. What, what's the strongest J bar you can get? Leave, leave it in the comments. What's the best? Because I would have thought that this thing was the strongest J bar you could buy. So let me know. Let me know what the strong J bar is. It's bent your hind too. This is some fundamental things that needs to be right about a Chevelle frame. Let's uh, break this down from a fundamental standpoint. Let's go ahead and break this down from a fundamental standpoint. See, the lower A-arm mount in the front should be on a plane that passes straight through the rear lower A-arm mount. But as you can see, we're like half a hole off here. And we're going to get on a better. One. Yeah, we're going to make that better. And we're going to get a better rod and make sure that everything's straight. This is kind of preliminary. Right, so. that is just what we had laying around. But yeah, we need you have like a ground half inch rod that will slide from one to the other perfectly. Something like Dave Hammond will tell you about that. That's how that needs to be. A straight line from front to back. We'll get a hardened rod to, and then we'll check with the USRA rule book and make sure that we're... Right, you, they give you a little bit of leeway on that as far as those measurements from every hole to locate it. So it has to be within spec because none of these cars, if they were stock, they may have been wrecked or anything. So there may be some variations. So we'll stay within the rules, but it needs to be that there's no binding from the A arms. That's a big, that's a big performance upgrade that doesn't cost anything if you know what you're doing. Yeah. What they say, GM tolerances were plus or minus a quarter of an inch. Yeah, something like that. So, so that gives us an inch to play with before <laughs> holes. Right. Yeah. yeah so there so you go. We'll, we'll stay within the tolerance, obviously, as to where it needs to be. But you can make it to where it's not just in a bind. There's no rules that says you have to have your car in a bind. Probably redrill these to five eighths, and then put washers on there, and then weld. And then once we get everything, and then weld the washers up. All right. Makes you wonder how many of you guys have cars that, uh, if you never check that, are like way off. Well, even like at the end of the year, I mean, it doesn't hurt to bring the car in, blow it apart, and then get you a hardened rod, and just make sure all the stuff is square again because your A frames get tweaked, everything. A rough track. Will yeah, like stuff. like the right front spring sees like. Oh, way over 2,000 pounds of load, and that's a lot on a stamped piece of metal. Inch, yeah. yeah. So anything can tweak like that. It's super easy to do, and that'd be a super easy check. If people have spindle checkers, you don't see people with lower A-frame checkers just every day. We're back at Push Performance. I want to put together the rear end, but before we can do that, we got to paint the bells. So let's get to doing that and uh, let you follow along. I'm going to mask them up, sand that down a little bit, shoot it with some black paint. You go to the store? Yeah. This is my wife! I'm going to run to the store and get some uh, scotch bright. Didn't have any. So we're just going to scuff these right here. Just wipe these down a little bit of brake cleaner. We're ready to do, uh, shoot some black on them.
And just like my dad always told me, you gotta shake this until the marble stops rattling. That's the key. What do you guys think? While the paint's drying on the tubes, I've got this uh, Swag Off-Road, not a sponsor, hydraulic ram mount, we're gonna weld up. It comes unwelded, so I'll set up the camera and show you guys what I'm doing here. So I'm just gonna have to weld up these seams here. I don't think I have to weld this tube in here, but I might, I'll have to read the instructions again. Weld up this corner seam. Try to get this half ass square. We're really gonna get some of those magnetic squares for welding. It helps if you turn the gas on. You do that every time. Alright, we got gas on now, let's see if we can make a decent one. I think real welders get really mad when you do this, but I'm not a real welder. Be sure to let me in the comments know how much I suck at welding. I'm sure there's lots of comments. You can ask uh, Andy Milliken though, I am a state champion. I think I need to weld, yeah, weld this up now. So, we'll do that, and then uh, maybe our paint will be dry. Weld it up on the clamp now. I think that's everything I need to weld up on that, so uh, there's that knocked out. Famous last words of a guy that wants to make something look nice. I think this is dry enough that we can put it together. In hindsight, I didn't really need to take this off at all on the bottom because it was just sitting on a piece of cardboard, but you know, we, we did it. I sent this nice little spec sheet here and there is a torque spec for all these so the side bell nuts should be 35 foot pounds. Alright, there's our brand new Bulldog DMI Easy Tube rear end. Is that thing not snazzy? And it, it looks way better with the black bells, so. Super excited about that. Okay, so uh, rear end's put together. We got our ram mount welded up. I think I'm gonna call it a day. 
you have any ideas for things they put in the next video or any suggestions, tell me my video sucks, tell me it's great. I don't know, let me know in the comments what you thought, please. Thanks guys for tuning in. See you in the next one.